Uh, my name is David Reamersmaw with HCP Training Team. Um, wanted to uh, go through a couple fun topics today on this beautiful Monday morning. Uh, we have the top of the hour. It's 10 o'clock my time. It might be 8 o'clock your time out, out, out west. Uh, for this week, we're going to cover a, a nice tip of the week. We're going to talk about a three-minute prospecting workout. And then we're going to talk about best practices as we move into, you know, the kind of a bit calling period of your year. Talk about to help staying, uh, you know, motivated, but also prospecting using LinkedIn as a resource. So that's what we're going to be covering today. Uh, again, want to start off with a motivational quote. And uh, you know, I'm a big sports fan. So this is one that's, you know, I, I've... I've used them many times. There's a little joke built into there, but uh, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So true in life and in sports. Uh, that was by the, the great one, Wayne Gretzky, also reused in the, the show The Office by Michael Scott. Uh, I just love that quote, but uh, it's a good one to think about here on a Monday morning. Uh, let's talk about our tip of the week this week as we run through. Uh, oops, I have to change that topic. So uh, but we're going to talk about the three-minute prospecting workout. So when you are cold calling, it's uh, your prospecting method of choice. The prospecting workout from Paul, this is from Paul Casting. You can need to increase your volume and quality of sales. So when you start your day, when you're going to make some calls and talk to people to get warmed up, leave yourself a 30-second prospecting voicemail. Focus on relevant talking points, uh, some things that you're going to kind of use as maybe a sales pitch, if you will, uh, and then analyze that voicemail at lunchtime and then make notes of ways to improve it and then leave another voicemail at the end of the day and repeat tomorrow. It's a good way to kind of hear what you sound like and to try to fine tune what your sales pitch can sound like. So moving in to our sales kudos for uh, for leaders we have short-term medical golden rule and pivot limited medical golden rule, accident NHIC, dental United Healthcare, and Aetna for our Medicare. Uh, for short-term, Katia Santa Maria, nice job, Jacob Gordon and Brandon Combs. For accident, Jeffrey Franzoni, William Cox, also William Cox for critical illness and Faith Canning. So congratulations to all of you. A lot of great performances uh, last week, but we're... Um, Moving on to LinkedIn. So I want to talk about LinkedIn, using it for best practices. So let's start with your profile picture. And again, I want to just back up for a second. When you're using LinkedIn, there's many, many different ways to do it. We're just going to go through some basics again on today. And if you don't have a profile, LinkedIn is a great way to connect with people. Um, so if you don't have a profile, this is a great, these are great tips, even just starting a profile, what you should put in a profile and what a professional profile looks like, and then we can use how to use it. So those are some things we're going to cover. Profile picture, keep it professional. Um, if you have a professional headshot done, that's great. Uh, if you don't, no big deal. Uh, you know, the cameras these days on these cell phones are fantastic. You can just throw some, throw a nice pair of clothes on, make sure your hair looks good, and then uh, have someone take a picture for you. You can use that as your headshot. Uh, a good thing to do, a rule of thumb, is don't crop the photo. Here's an example of a great headshot. Person's in a suit, smiling, um, great headshot. Uh, when you're looking at, and thinking of your profile picture, avoid using pictures of your cars, boats, pets, and significant others. Remember, this is your professional page. Those things are great. You know, you might have a really cool boat or a really cute dog or cat, um, but those are good for your personal uh, social media pages, not for LinkedIn. Um, also, if you have a significant other, you could confuse people into who's who. So uh, keep your significant other. Otherwise, people might always think you might be in business together. Keep it just your profile. Profile content, your headline. Have it be clear. Have it be attention getting. Um, if you look at this person, this is someone I found on the Allstate side. Um, this has a very good, clean, nice background banner photo that shows the city that they live in and some basic information. The about you portion. So on the about you, there's a little area for you can kind of write about you. Uh, you know, this is not about the author or this is not your biography, autobiography or anything. Just keep it really short and to the point. Uh, meaning, who are you? What are you about? And what have you done? 
Those are some great uh, examples of things you can do for the about you. Your profile content. Remember, uh, for your, any jobs you've done in your current job, this is not your CV or your resume. So try to limit, you know, things that you've, you know, accomplished in there. Just keep this short to the point so people know what you do. Don't go into significant detail. Um, your resume or CV, that's for, you know, a different audience. Your education. Uh, try not to include high school, um, but all if you do have a, a degree in, in higher learning, uh, be specific about the degree that you have when you graduated in any organizations that you were a part of at college, or was a fraternity, sorority, um, you know, athletics, whatever it might be, those are very helpful to have in your content for your profile. When you look at awards, also try to keep it relevant to your field of study, field that you are in. Uh, meaning that, you know, if you won the hot Nathan's hot dog eating contest, that's great. But, you know, it's not really that relevant in the insurance field. <laughs> Might be counterproductive. <laughs> but keep that stuff out. Keep things relevant. You know, community service, um, you know, military, things like that are great to put in there. Uh, any volunteer organizations, anything you're doing in your community, great. But try to keep it relevant to the field. Uh, something that is still in there but not used as often are skills and endorsements. Uh, I still encourage put your skills in there so people know what you feel like you are strong at. Um, there will be people that eventually will come through and endorse you for them. Not use as often as it used to, but it is still a thing. When we're looking at recommendations, uh, this is from my straight profile, from my background. At a, you know, well, three of these are actually from job, a job I used to do way back in the day. But uh, it's very important to have, you know, this is just as important of having people, you know, write you a letter of recommendation. This is for the public to see. So not just send, something you're sending personally, but it's a little different than a letter of recommendation because a letter of recommendation might be a little bit more detailed or long. These are short hits, but just give the overall experience of people that don't know you what it's going to be like to work with you. You know, it's people are going to look at these uh, people are going to, you know, other thing, too, is when people do business with you, they're going to look you up on LinkedIn. Um, that's a very common thing you'll see. Um, and when you're on LinkedIn, you'll see who viewed your profile. People will look you up. These are the things they're kind of looking for. So, for example, I have one that like has someone I used to work directly with. Then I had a one that uh, is someone who I actually worked for. And then I had a client of mine. So in here, I have three good variations. Try to get them from people that you've, you're in the business field with, like not your brother, your sister, your wife or husband, or your dog. Uh, you know, Keep it something that they're, they're going to be important people because we have family members. Of course, they're not going to carry a lot of weight because, of course, your family, if you ask them a letter, a letter, letter recommendation, they're probably going to give you a good one, right? Uh, also, if people write you one, um, do reciprocate for others too. Write one for people uh, that help you out. So ask some people that you know you do business with. I think customers probably carry the most weight, especially with what we're doing here. Uh, that'd be huge if you have some customers or friends with on LinkedIn. Ask them to write a letter of what it's like to work with you. On LinkedIn, I want you to be aware of kind of the types of people on LinkedIn. Um, just so you, if you don't have a profile, this is something to be uh, well aware of. If you do have a profile, it's something also to be aware of. Uh, I kind of put people in the four different buckets of LinkedIn users. The number one are people that are hired as recruiters, you know, headhunter, you know, job headhunters, um, job hunters, people looking for a job. Those are, that's one type of LinkedIn user. You will see these people on there. You'll get um, recruiters send you messages, you know, just for random jobs that might not even be relevant to what you're doing. You'll see that out there. Um, there also be people looking for jobs that might text you like, hey, what's it like to work for HCP? Uh, those are people that are out there on LinkedIn. I don't think when LinkedIn created their, created their um, you know, their their so their platform that that was the number one intent. But and these are in no uh, particular order, by the way. I'm just listening the types of users. But the second one you'll see are very active business profiles. Uh, these are people that uh, you, know, you get to have a lot of connections. They have a, a really nice profile picture. They have a banner. Uh, they're very detailed in their profile. Um, those are things, some things to look for. So if you're looking at, you know, using LinkedIn as a prospecting tool, these are the most effective people to reach because they're on LinkedIn on a regular basis. 
Uh, they might even have it on their phone. So when you send them a message, it will hit them a lot, a lot of times like a text message because if they have it on their phone, they get a notification. Um, if they're actively using LinkedIn, they'll they'll see your message within you know a day, a couple of days, they'll see it. Then you want to be careful with these last two. Uh, the light moderate users. These are people that you know have a LinkedIn page. They might log, you know, it's all set up correctly. They might not have as many connections because they're not on that much. And you know, they might not have updated information because again, they're not on it. They don't really utilize LinkedIn much. So if you try to reach out to people for prospecting using LinkedIn and you're talking to a light moderate user, they may not see your message if you reach out to them for you know months at a time. So just be careful. Then the fourth one, or these are probably people to avoid uh, reaching out to on LinkedIn because it won't be effective. Uh, these are people that don't have a banner, don't have a profile picture. Uh, they, <laughs> they don't use LinkedIn. Their, their former employer probably asked them to set up a page and they did it to be compliant <laughs> and then they never use it again. Uh, sometimes inactives might not even work for the company. They might have an email address they don't even use anymore. So probably not a good use of your time. It'll be a really throwing darts uh, to, to reach people with inactive profiles. Uh, I have a couple examples of them here. Again, here's an active business profile. Here's someone that works for Allstate. Um, you can see this person post stuff about something he was at yesterday. He's got a banner with a logo, professional headshot. He's got um, all the information you can see. He's got 500 plus connections. Uh, so this is someone that if you would reach out to, uh, I'm not saying to reach out to him, but if this is someone you did, you can see that his person has a very active profile. Here's an inactive profile. Um, someone, again, no banner picture, very few connections. Um, someone that's probably not the best fit to reach out to. What should you post? Let's talk about posting on LinkedIn. Keep in mind, LinkedIn is not Facebook, okay? Like LinkedIn is a professional platform for business. Um, so when you think about what you should post, think about these few things. Is it relevant to the audience I'm connecting with? So if you're in insurance, would posting about, you know, your NF favorite NFL football teams, um, you know, people they're going to be cutting this week, is that relevant to the audience you're connected with? Probably not. Um, also would, would fall in line with the next one of being credible in your field. If you're selling insurance or if you're selling cars or whatever you're selling, um, keep it keep in your lane. So again, using that previous example, talking about how your favorite team's going to be making roster cuts in the NFL, you're not credible in that field, right? You're not a sports analyst, right? So people are not going to take what you post um, with that much strength. So, but if it's in insurance or in your line of insurance, yes, it will have, a, you will be very credible. People will listen and uh, you are a good resource. Uh, you know, if your company posts something out, um, that's something that they say you can share, share it uh, or create your own post as long as it's approved. Um, but always keep your post relevant to work field, your work field. Um, also engage in your network. If you have friends on LinkedIn, just like on other social media platforms, like what stuff they're doing, comment on it. If it's something that's relevant to your field or if you're trying to help them, reshare it, right? Someone's opening up a, their own little business in a certain market that you might be in, you know, and they're announcing it on their LinkedIn, share it to your people, right? Help people out. Uh, when your friends or, and family or potential clients get promotions, congratulate them. Wish them a happy birthday, all that stuff. It's always great to stay engaged on LinkedIn. Uh, another thing I want to mention is you're going to get messages from spammers, and also you don't want to appear to be one of these people. So here's some uh, samples of some people that have sent me spam messages. And all these people do is get some kind of list. And they have a, I don't know, sometimes they use mail merge where they just insert the high in your name. So this is the same generic message that these people are sending to everybody on their list. It's not personalized. To me, it's, I, it, I, view, I view it as spam because I don't know this person. There's not really relevant to the stuff I do personally. Um, but they're just trying to sell you with, on over LinkedIn. It's, it's the same thing as getting someone who, uh, you know, you get one of those people trying to sell you a car warranty. I feel like it's almost the same feeling I get from these people. Um, 
the, the what usually will happen is this person will add you as a connection and then moments later will send you a generic message it's not effective if you know i guess if they sent to 10,000 people i'm sure they get some hits but it's not a very effective way it's always good if you're going to engage somebody to make a personalized message for them that's what you want to do uh using inmail uh, if you're going to inmail someone get like i said in this in the previous um mention to send an email, introduce yourself before you send them any kind of sales pitch or anything along that. Um, use LinkedIn and, and email as a complement to your phone connections. Like don't stop calling and just use LinkedIn. It's not going to be effective. LinkedIn is, you know, if you think about, you know, someone who is a, uh, a repair person, right, has a tool belt. LinkedIn's not going to be your primary tool that you use in your tool belt, but it's going to be a compliment. It's going to be on your tool belt, but it's not going to be the first or second tool you rip out. So use as part of your process. I, I hope some of these things really helped you. Um, you know, if you're if you're trying to you know dabble in LinkedIn or if you already have a profile and really don't know how to go about take it to the next level, I really hope these things helped you today. And I also hope you all have a very awesome week and enjoy your Labor Day weekend. If you have any questions, feel free to write us and, and uh, send us an email at training at hcpsales.com. Or you can call agency services at 877-228-8773. I'm David Riemersma, and I hope you have an outstanding day. Thank you.